Hello everybody, my name is Pizza and welcome or welcome back to my channel. So this video has been requested under this other tutorial a few weeks ago but I only now have time to record it and today I'm gonna show you a simple way to implement head bobbing or camera bobbing into your first person game. If you're interested in a more complex but realistic solution I'm gonna link a video that I found really interesting on the topic in the description. With this out of the way, let's get right into it. In real life, we always try to get our footage as stable as possible, but in a first-person game, we, as developers, might want to simulate the player's head popping as they walk around to make the game feel more immersive. To achieve this, in the hierarchy, we'll have the player object have an empty child or we refer to as the head, which will have the camera as its own child, positioned at its local origin. The first person controller will rotate the head to look up and down, while the camera will be translated to simulate bobbing relative to its parent. To translate the camera along the same orbit periodically, we're gonna use the cosine and sine functions for the x and y offset. If we have the sine, have the frequency doubled relative to the sign. We'll get this nice curve that our camera will follow, which in my opinion simulates steps very well. In a simple way, obviously. So, now that we know what we're doing, let's create a new mono behavior class and let's start coding. The first two fields we'll add are a reference to the head and the camera is transformed. Then, we'll specify the bob frequency, which will be the speed of the effect and the horizontal and vertical amplitude which will control how wide and how high the camera will be translated. Lastly, we'll have a float used to control the smoothing of our effect, to avoid any sudden snaps. The default values you see on the screen right now are the ones I'm gonna use in this tutorial, but you might want to try them out for yourself and find what works best with your game. Eventually, we might want to add a few more fields to keep track of the state of the component. The bool, that I call is working, is to control whether the effect should be on or off. A counter to keep track of the time the player has been walking for, to make sure that the sine and cosine waves start from the same position every time, and the vector 3 to store the position we want our camera to be at, which we will use to interpolate its final position. In the update function, the first thing we'll do is check whether the player is walking or not. If not, Let's set the walking time to zero, otherwise let's increase it by the time dot delta time. Then we'll calculate our camera's target position by adding some offset to the head position. The calculate head bob offset function that takes a float as an argument, in this case the walking time, is not defined by default and we'll declare it in a moment. The last thing we'll need to do in to update would be lurping between the camera's position and the target position by a factor of head bob smoothing. Then, if the distance between the camera position and the target position is lesser than some small value, I chose 0.001, but it's absolutely arbitrary, we'll just set the camera's position to the target one. Now let's add on to the calculate head bob offset function that will receive a float parameter and returns a vector 3. First thing first, let's declare three local variables with a default value of 0, two floats for the horizontal and vertical offsets, and a vector 3 that will store the final result. Then we'll have an if statement check whether the t parameter is greater than 0. If so, let's calculate the horizontal offset by calculating the cosine of t times bob frequency using the matf.cos function and multiplying it by the horizontal amplitude. We we'll also calculate the vertical offset in a similar manner but using the matf.sign function with argument t times bob frequency times 2, all multiplied by bob vertical amplitude. The last thing we'll do will be combining the two offsets in a single vector 3 by adding the product of head transform.right times horizontal offset to the, uh, to the product of head transform.op times vertical offset. We are using the local head transform space because we don't want the movement to depend on the direction our player is facing and this method will allow us to operate in local coordinates. Finally, let's return the offset so that we can use it as shown before. In the editor, assuming the hierarchy of the player object follows the one I have shown earlier, 
let's assign the head and camera's transform to the reference in the script. I'll leave the default values and is walking to false for now. Now let's take our player object into a proper scene and see how things work. Okay, if we hit the play button with the same setup that I've just shown and set is walking to true in the inspector, we can see that the camera starts following the infinite shaped orbit that we defined. Moreover, rotating the player object or the head will not affect the camera's behavior that will remain consistent in its local space. Now you just have to implement the camera bobbing component with the first person controller. Just make sure that the transform that gets rotated is not the cameras, but the head. You can easily reference the camera bobbing component in whichever first person solution you are using and set it to true when the player is moving and to false when they're standing still. For this time, I will leave a link to an updated version of my first person controller that works with this camera bobbing component in the description. But if you're using your own script, you can easily implement it in that. Once that we have done that, let's enter play mode one more time and check that everything is working properly and, as expected, everything is. <laughs> I'm sorry for that. And that was it, we now have a simple head bobbing solution to implement in our game. As always, this was very basic and simple, so you might want to tweak it or expand on it for your game. That's all for me. If you have any ideas or questions, feel free to share them in the comments below. I will try to answer most of them. And if you decide to stick around, see you next time.